strongest. That was Henry David Gorow on the duty of civil disobedience. We, the unheard and the unprecedented people of Victoria, vow to gather in peaceful, lawful assembly on a weekly basis to demand from our government a return to normal. A true normal, one without fear, threats and limits to humanity. We do not gather in defiance of social responsibility to do our bit in the face of a perceived public health threat. Rather, we gather to face the responsibility of a threat to life far bigger and with, more, and with far more widespread and longer lasting impact than what currently may be of consequence from opposing the arbitrary and unscientifically sound rules of appointed health officials. We represent a rapidly growing community who believes that the threat of proportionally significant risk is that of long-term public health, mental health, broken economies and collateral factors, bodily autonomy and civil liberties, privacy, and perhaps most dangerous of all, the threat of loss of democracy. There are the shadows. These are the shadow pandemics that will not withstand further waves of devastation. We have followed the rules. We have done the right thing. We have given our government the benefit of the doubt. We clung on with optimism when it was claimed it would be just two weeks to flatten the curve. When small businesses and employees were assured they would be financially supported, when it was declared that the new vaccine, lacking long-term safety data, would not be made mandatory, when our representatives told us just to do the right thing and your freedoms will be restored, we acted in good faith. But the goalposts kept on moving, little by little, like a frog in boiling water. Our rights were taken away in absence of any good scientific debate or delivery of transparent decision making. Instead of welcoming robust discussion and democratic process, we have been gaslit and publicly defamed, blamed as perpetrators of violence, whilst being shot at with hostile weapons and harassed by members of the public, continued to see us, the enemy, by media and politically endorsed propaganda. We have lost family, we have lost friends. We are on the brink of desperation to restore some decent, decency to humanity, along with our basic rights. It is clear we are never getting back to normal. And the new normal is not a condition we will ever willingly accept. Historically, rights taken away by bureaucratic overreach are rarely gifted back without strong advocacy, effort and resistance. We refuse to be destroyed as a society by bending relentlessly to the wills of bureaucratic bullies. We say, enough! We declare... Yeah. We declare... Uh, we declare with conviction that we will no longer tolerate such assaults on the basic things that make life worth living. And those things are security, connection, health and freedom. Here are our terms. No coercive health measures. Mandatory detention, coerced medical procedures, and segregation. These are measures 
we have all learned about from brutal regimes throughout history. Now, medical tyranny has entered our lives and we vow to resist this at every turn.
after a year of being told to listen to the science, our elected officials have seemingly forgotten the basis of what makes up the scientific process. Science is a con conversation where ideas are challenged in the form of open debate. Now, we wake to 24 hour news coverage of one narrative. And that is the government. While concerned academics, scientists, economists, economists and healthcare professionals are framed as descendants. Dissidents, sorry. That is not science, that is dogma. We demand AFRA, universities, health unions, and other regulatory bodies remove the gag order from these professionals. Yeah. And the mainstream media stop the anti-scientific campaign to smear, to smear and defame those with countervailing views. We demand the government reopens the discourse into how we manage public health in a manner compatible with a free society. And the next one! <laughs> Number four, golden and early treatments. Yeah. Vital life-saving information on immune health, viral tolerance, and effective early treatments are being withheld from the public. biased reliance on cherry-picked science that one can only deduce is the result of conflicts of interest between government and pharmaceutical industry. A new vaccine cannot be mandated with an approved treatment available. It is criminally corrupt that whilst our government helps to all the profit pockets of Big Pharma, executives by pushing vaccine propaganda and mandates of a drug with no long-term safety studies and waning efficiency against variants, safe and effective treatments such as hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin are being hidden from the public and shunned by medical industry bodies whose intentions to be questioned to support monetary interest over health! Yeah. <laughs> Australian doctors are warned not to advertise any treatment that could undermine the vaccine rollout! They will face disciplinary action through loss of medical registration. Same as nurses and other healthcare pr practitioners. Is this aligned with a doctor's duty to meet the best interests of their patients? The clinical and epidemiological science to support early treatment protocols as endorsed by top doctors and scientists worldwide is indisputably indicative of superior efficacy against death and severity of disease as well as safety compared to the vaccine. Yet the media and politicians remain silent and instead demonise those in support of early treatments as spreading misinformation. There's no money in it, people. There's no money in early treatment. It's off patent. 
They need to make the new drugs. The new drugs to fill their pockets up. The clinical... Oh, I read that right here. The lack of support for public information, campaigns for personal responsibility in managing one's own immune health through preventative vitamin supplement protocols and basic lifestyle habits like not being locked down. <laughs> Exercise, fresh air, not social distancing. Friendly smile, not a mask over your face. That's right. Yes. Bring back humanity. It is a perplexing issue given the current fear around virus transmission. Why would our government promote basic, robust immune health as a solution to avoiding sickness and protect the vulnerable with access to pre preventative and early treatment protocols? underprivileged. Why else, during a time where small business are failing and the economy is in ruins, do politicians still receive full benefits? Why are sportsmen and media broadcasters essential while work working classes and immigrant communities are destitute, unable to work from home. We are the people who have lost jobs, lost homes, lost friends and family. To addition, domestic abuse and suicide. We are the people who have lost loved ones from system neglect. We are the people who have lost the businesses we have poured our blood, sweat and tears into. Our numbers grow with each passing day. We will keep spilling into the streets until the time we may live our lives free from the suffering. We will resist wholeheartedly until all our demands are met.
And finally, until sense and reason is returned to humanity. That's it, guys. Guys, these are our requests. These are our, this is our movement. This is the people's movement. We will not go down until the very last person. From three or four weeks ago, from three or four weeks ago until now, we have lost a lot of people. People don't know what to do anymore. The strategies are working. They are, they have had a successful um, mandate where a lot of people have had to have been coerced and forced to keep their livelihoods and in doing that, they have taken attack. Shame! Shame! but maybe that's best, will not stand down, we will not stop fighting. So thank you everyone for being here.